Good evening, Mayor Crombie, Chief Nissan Durapak, and all the guests. It is with great joy that I welcome you to this banquet. Tonight, we honor an individual who does outstanding community work as a police officer. I also like to give thanks to our municipal government and pay tribute to our Peel Regional Police. In 2020, a tiny virus rocked our nation. Mississauga was not spared. At the darkest moment, all restaurants were closed. There was no dine-in, take our orders only. Our Mayor Crombie was busy going around with new life to small businesses. She was right here in this restaurant, helping Emerald to survive. That was on February 19, 2020. As our, for our police chief niche, he conducted a special virtual presentation on October 7, 2021 with MCBA. He spoke directly to all our business community, giving them hope and inspiration. He was very convincing and very reassuring. We thank you for that. Both leaders were there for us when we needed them the most. COVID-19 was vicious. It killed, it ruined businesses, it wiped out our fortune, it destroyed life, it brought us misery, it took away our future. Now, two and a half years later, the business community is still hurting. They have not yet fully recovered. This makes putting up CCAD at Mississauga Celebration Square a challenge this year. It costs us over $20,000 just to showcase the event. Other event organizers are also feeling the same pinch. But Mississauga MCBA will not shy away from any responsibility. With ingenuity and maximum effort, our team will put up the best CCAD ever on September 24th. Please come. CCAD is an important tool to Mississauga. It promotes business, it creates excitement, it blends all cultures together. It nurtures the family and people of all ages. It is entertainment at its best. CCAD is a unique Mississauga experience. We are very grateful for the strong showing of the government and the police tonight, especially the police service board. Thank you. However, with so much uncertainty in the economy, bold action would be needed. And we run, when, especially when we run out of miracles, MCBA will be there to meet the challenges. And we look forward to the mayor and the chief partnering with us to make Mississauga truly a city for all people. Together, we will be triumphant. Thank you, and have a great evening. I think we'll do this. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all very well. Thank you, Jake. Thank you to MCBA for now hosting this dinner in 19 years. Uh, notwithstanding the break we had over COVID, it is certainly nice to get everyone together in the room once again, but I caution you to please continue to be careful. 
Uh, WHO just reported that deaths are lowest um, possible as a result of the virus, so we're very grateful for that. Now, before I introduce a few people that I want to acknowledge that are here with me, let me just say it has been a really, really tough week. You know, let's thank all of our frontline responders, particularly Peel Regional Police, our paramedics, our fire and emergency services for responding as bravely as they do each and every single day. They put their lives on the line for us each and every day. But this week, unfortunately, it began in Mississauga. There was a senseless act, a senseless attack on an individual who is a fellow comrade, who's Constable Andrew Hong, over in a, a business in the northwest end of town that resulted in his passing. This is a time to remember the individuals that were taken from us, and we'll learn more and more about the details of what happened later. But now let's just keep them in our, our memories. I know, that, I know that you all join me in mourning, in grieving, and sending our love and affection to their families who are facing an enormous loss right now. Fathers who are not coming home to their wives and their children, men who were husbands, fathers, sons, incredible people who are part of their teams. When I think about what was written about Constable Andrew Hong, what an incredible man he was, so friendly and loved by all his, uh, all his team. And then today, I had the opportunity to attend the funeral of Shaquille Ashraf, the Milton man who owned the auto body shop, who you may or may not know, started his career here in Mississauga, grew up here, and then moved out to Milton when he had a family. Another individual who was lighthearted, fun, funny, dedicated his life to his community, to his family, gave back to the community, was known as a very, very talented uh, cricketer on the cricket pitch, and in fact, played against Peel police many times. So these are two individuals this week that lost their lives right, very close by. And then this morning we suffered another loss with Constable Gillespie on his way to work. So it has been a devastating week for all of us. Nobody's quite themselves, but we do have to remember these individuals and thank them for, the, for putting their lives on the, on the line. And, and of course to Shaquille Ashraf for being the outstanding person he was today. So I don't want to dampen all your spirits. We, we have to mourn them, but we want to thank. Thank Peel Regional Police. Thank our paramedics. Thank Fire and Emergency Services. Uh, I think it was the fire department who arrived first on the scene, I think. Where's uh, Chief Rizzi is here? doesn't matter. They all work together. And we had the unfortunate opportunity to pay our respects at the scene of the crime yesterday with Chief Rizzi. We dimmed our clock tower. We lowered the flags. I know Chief Duryapa has been out building morale with his folks, and uh, many of them are traumatized, and he probably will speak to that, and I thank him for what he's done. But it's been a tough week, but notwithstanding these isolated and random incidents, we are still a healthy city. We are still one of the safest cities in Canada, but we're also a big city, and we are suffering, and people are suffering, as you see throughout COVID. And we'll learn more about this shooter and why he may have done it and, you know, what, what, what drove him to later. But let's, let's remember the individuals who were taken from us this week and celebrate their lives while we're here. And let me thank MCBA for always being on the front line as well to celebrate policing, to work with our frontline workers, frontline police officers, our team, and always being there for the community. You do such great work in our community. And we'd, I wanted to come and thank you, not just with the Crime Prevention Day and the policing dinner, so much great work in the community, raising money wherever we need you. So thank you, I'm sorry to be a, a little bit more somber in my remarks today, but obviously this has uh, touched us greatly and it's quite a devastating loss to the communities involved. So thank you for having me, thank you. <coughs>
Thank you. Jake and I often get mistaken in public for each other. He's more my, uh, handsome and younger. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's a real honor and privilege to be here uh, in person. I think uh, I want to say on behalf of uh, the entire Peel Regional Police Organization, it's, uh, it's a great moment to be back in person. I just want to first reflect, when I came here in October 2019, uh, I didn't have an opportunity to actually come to one of the uh, community policing dinners. So this is a real privilege for me to be back in person with my team. And uh, I, before I go any further, if I can just have the Peel Regional Police civilian and sworn members please stand. I know they're not gonna be happy about that, but uh, please stand for me just. Thank you, everyone. There's been a lot of acknowledgement of the chief. Thank you, you can uh, have a seat, thank you. But to be honest, I'm the steward of some amazing civilian and, and uniform members of this organization. I'm just a steward for a period of time to help uh, you know, point them in a direction that it aligns to what's important to us here in Peel. And so uh, I first want to recognize that uh, tonight when we, I'll get on to talking about community policing and the importance of that, particularly about the Community Crime Prevention Awareness Day. But uh, in reflection for today, you know, I think all of us in the police community and the broader community are, are grieving. Uh, without a doubt, uh, that is, uh, there's so many questions yet to be answered. Uh, not just today, we know Constable uh, Andrew Wong was of Korean de descent. Uh, you know, to have a Southeast Asian in policing is a is a remarkable one in 22 years nonetheless. So he would have been a pioneer uh, in 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 uh, his field. Uh, Travis Gillespie, you know, a relatively newer officer. So the circumstances are very broad. But what I want to draw the highlight is, despite those tragedy tragedies and what was happening that evening, men and women were continuing to serve the community. Uh, we have civilian 911 call takers, uh, not just the ones that were deeply impacted by uh, the tragic incident in Mississauga this week, uh, but ones that had to continue to respond to phone calls from maybe some of us who needed help and assistance. Uh, and uh, I think I just want to bring to you first, uh, on behalf of the police sector, we continually appreciate the love and support. Uh, MCBA, thank you for honoring us. We really, uh, at moments, don't feel worthy of that. We have a role amidst the rest of the community to improve the health and well-being of it. So first of all, thank you. We want to bring a message of uh, uh, perseverance. And uh, if that makes any sense to you, we as a community continue to have to move forward. And we will, we will do that and honor the people that sacrifice. So uh, I'm, I'm wanting to shift from you know, acknowledging the loss today and not forget about it but also move on to an important message that we have an amazing thing going on here in Mississauga and Peel. Uh, I wanna thank, uh, you know, Mayor, thank you so much. Uh, our board members, uh, Chair Ron Chatta, uh, Samita Kohli, uh, and the entire board for uh, creating a pathway for us uh, to do this good work. Uh, I've got my deputies here and uh, one more on his way and the other one, uh, unfortunately, is on the major investigation from this week. But what I can say is that the idea of community policing is not necessarily the police policing the community. It's we're bringing to the table a view here in Peel Region, especially during these two years of COVID, where we've been mitigated from being out in the community. We have seen transformational change in the approach to policing. And this is building on the best in class traditions of all these members that are here today. Uh, but we see a way forward to reduce the pressures, not just on you in the business community or you as residents, but we need to find ways of bringing other sectors together to mitigate the risk and harm. And so my story to you is it's not just police, it's police and the community resolving some of these issues. My conversations, Pierre, thank you so much for coming to us with your, your board and directors. You are both feet committed into the vision we have at Peel Regional Police to make us the safest urban community in Canada. And can I tell you, we are there. Uh, I think uh, not just the mayor mentioning it, Jake mentioned it, Pierre mentioned it. Statistically speaking, 
and I'll speak to that in a second. Mississauga, Peel Region are the safest large urban centers in Canada, and it's something we should be proud of. But we recognize people's perceptions of safety is their frame of reference. So this is not a position for us to sit and wait back. We see tragic incidents. We see the business community affected uh, by fraud, by theft, by many other opportunities. Our older adults in the community, I know Pierre, we've talked about what we can do for seniors. Our young people, we've talked about mental health, addictions, uh, violent crime, and many of us know road safety. These are all the priorities for Peel Regional Police. And uh, I can tell you, we are making efforts to ensure that this community is invested in those regards. The transformation at Peel Police has increased our, our work in those areas. And uh, I want to say that our message to the community is we're doing things differently in policing here in Peel than other communities. And the reason is we want to serve the community in a way that's informed by them. I know Chief Ritzy and I have talked, uh, Chief Dundas from the paramedics. Uh, our emergency services are the 24-7 go-to for all crisis in the community. 80% of what our officers respond to are non-criminal activity. It's food insecurity, homelessness, we talked about mental health and addictions, youth-related issues, older adult isolation. And these are spaces that we need others to come and build into to help us reduce it. And that allows us to be more effective in the spaces that you need us the most. So what we're showing is a thoughtful approach to policing here in Peel. We want that to be the hallmark of what we're known for. Our aspirational vision at Peel Regional Police is to be the most innovative, progressive organization internationally. And we have men and women here that are doing it. And can I tell you, we will do that. My people are going to roll their eyes, but we'd be remiss to talk about some of uh, the reason we're named after Sir Robert Peel, who is seen as the founder of policing in the Commonwealth world. And he has multiple principles. I can ask you to Google it, or maybe Jay can Google it for you later. But uh, one of the principles says, uh, you know, the policing of the police of the public and public of the police. And um, you know, when we talk about community policing, that's the foundation of it. But the part that people don't read is if you go on to read the sentence, he goes on to say, the police are the ones that are paid to do what's incumbent upon the rest of the community. So if you pause on that part, and this is not me absconding from my responsibilities, you know we'll have that every day, all day, 24 seven. But what we're asking for is strong partnerships with communities to build that part of it. So that it's not just the police, but it's every segment of the community. So I would first want to commend the MCBA for being the, the, one of the best examples for filling that space. You have come to our doorstep to say, what can we do with you as a business community to make Mississauga more vibrant? And it's not lost upon us. Thank you, congratulations to you, first of all, for continuing to do that. It's not lost upon us that a safe community, a vibrant community, is good for business. Business strengthens the, the social safety net, strengthens our people, uh, it allows our work to be uh, you know, conceivably easier. So uh, I, I do want to encourage people to continue to uh, you know, come to the Community Crime Awareness Day on September 24th. Uh, it, unfortunately, as Pierre mentioned, is the National Police Memorial. Uh, and so, unfortunately, myself and some of my leadership team are in Ottawa, Parliament Hill, uh, rightfully so, particularly after this past week, are there. But we have a lot of our Peel Police members. Some of them are the ones that are here at, in the community that will be there. Crime prevention, ethnocultural programming, ones that serve this diverse population that we're proud of. I want to thank you for hosting this Community Crime uh, Prevention Day, but even then calling this a community policing night. Uh, it's about us together not just about policing. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Jake. Thank you, have a wonderful night.